Hey there, marketing researchers. In this video, we're going to introduce ourselves to designing surveys inside of Qualtrics. Let's imagine the scenario that we're going to be using to learn how to develop our Qualtrics survey. Briefly, we're imagining that we're conducting a craft beer consumer survey. Some of our key research objectives are the following. Identify San Diego craft beer drinkers' favorite brewery. Identify the brand personality assigned to their favorite brewery. Determine the amount of money they spend on their favorite brewery. Determine the specific brands of San Diego beer that they recently drank. Determine their attitudes towards those consumed San Diego beers. Then evaluate via experiment their response towards three alternative beer advertisements. And then finally, evaluate people's attitudes towards Michigan craft beers, specifically when they're viewed as bottles and cans. In this scenario, the questionnaire items in the flow of the survey have already been developed for us outside of Qualtrics, as it should always be done. It's very difficult to design a survey in Qualtrics in real time. It's best to design it first outside of Qualtrics and then migrate it into Qualtrics once you're ready to go. Therefore, in this video, we just have to see the questions that are asked of us to develop into Qualtrics and place them inside the survey. Okay, I've already created my Qualtrics account through the SDSU business portal. So now that I've done that correctly, I can go directly to Qualtrics.com and simply log in. You can see here because I see the Sadio State University logo, I know I'm in the right place. And here's my dashboard. I have numerous projects and folders that I've created in the past. Give it a name. We can put it in a folder if we have folders. We can create our project. Here we have our normal dashboard for Qualtrics. We're in the survey tab now. Here's some headers along the top here where we can change the overall structure and design of the survey. Here we have the name of the survey that we already created. And then we here we have something called a block. Blocks are things that hold questions. You can add a new block, create a new, to create a new block, and new questions can go in there. We'll see in a moment why it's useful to have more than one block of questions. As I said earlier, somebody was already kind enough to have developed this survey outside of Qualtrics in a Word document for us. They even offered some useful colored headers. If I see something in blue, I know it's the actual name of the variable. If it's red, that means there's some sort of logic that I have to include into the Qualtrics survey to make it function properly. Green is a name I have to give to an actual block, a new block in Qualtrics. And finally, if anything's in orange, that's some additional tips that might be useful for you. In this case, we have to start with an introduction. And since the introduction's already here, we can simply copy it. Control C. And we can create a new question. And whenever we create a new question, the right hand side is always where most of the key default settings for changing the question type and question options and question wording are available. This isn't really a question at all. It's actually just descriptive text. Now we can click here, paste our introduction in. And something that's usually useful to do after you paste any content from another source into Qualtrics is to click this little remove formatting button. So if there's any lingering bold or italics that came from a different document, you can strip that out so you stick with the default settings already provided by the Qualtrics system. And then if you wanna do any bolding, centering, italicizing, and so on, you can always click the rich content editor button here where you have your standard what you see is what you get interface. You can even do HTML programming if you're comfortable with that. Notice here, by default, the default question block has a name. We actually want to give that the name introduction per our instructions. And right now, this question is called question one. We actually want to call it intro. Very good, piece of cake. Next, we have to create our screening question. We want to make sure that people over 21, or I'm sorry, 21 or over, are actually taking our survey copy all this content here make a new question immediately below we can give it a name screener we can paste this all in strip the formatting and these are the actual survey options that we're going to want to have so we don't want them up here in the instructions we're going to make use of them in a moment so I'm going to cut this out hitting control X to cut in my case by default Qualtrics guessed what type of response scale I wanted to use for this question, like a great deal to dislike a great deal. The reason it did that is because if we look on the right hand side here, we'll see that for our choice options, the automatic choice option is selected. Notice how if you click on here, Qualtrics has a bunch of default response scales available to us. In this case, it chose very poorly. We only want three options. And you can actually click in here directly and type in or in this case, what's much easier for us, we can click on the edit multiple and a menu pops up 
And since we already have our three options nicely sorted into different rows, we can paste them right here and click Done. Now there's one more thing we need to do here. If somebody says they're under 21, we don't want them to actually take this survey. So the question would be, if they click under 21 and then submit that answer, can we kick them out of the survey or take them directly to the end? That's easy enough to do with one of the options here on the right-hand side called Add Skip Logic. Adding Skip Logic takes information from the question in front and then sends them to somewhere else in the survey. In this case, we want to send them all the way to the end. These menus are helpful. and In this particular case, Qualtrics default setting was exactly what we wanted. If someone's under 21 is selected, then skip to the end of the survey. Now we're done. For our next block, called Fave Block, we have a series of questions related to San Diego breweries and San Diego beers. We'll have a question about someone, uh, what someone's favorite brewery is from the subset. Then we want them to evaluate how they feel about that brewery along some brand personality dimensions. Then we're going to ask individuals how much money they spent on beer. I'll start with Fave Brew here. I can copy all of this. Earlier I clicked Add Block and already have a new block waiting. This is just a normal multiple choice question. Proceed just like we did last time. Remove the formatting. Edit multiple choices. And paste them right back in. I don't think I want those little bullet points there, so I'll have to delete those. It's good practice here to never use spaces when you're naming questionnaires, uh, questioner items. Oh, and I realize I should change this to fave block just to keep it consistent. Okay, now there's one more thing we need to do here. If someone selects the other option, we definitely want them to be able to type in an answer if they choose to do so. Way to do that is we can select the actual individual questionnaire response category right here, click on it, and we can allow a text entry. You can see that right here. Okay, for this next question, we want to have people evaluate the brand personality of the brewery that they said was their favorite. Let's make a new question. We give it the name eval underscore top. See, it's all one word because I used an underscore instead of a space. And then again, I can simply copy and paste the text so I don't have to write it again. And we'll see that I have an instruction that says I need to take the answer from the previous question piped in. So I want people to actually know exactly which question, I'm, uh, which answer from the previous question they're supposed to be thinking about. So we can use a nice little tool here in Qualtrics, delete this. I actually want to pipe in using the pipe text feature the information that came from some previous question. So piping quite literally means takes information from one location and brings it over via piping into another part in the survey. In this case, we're going to be piping from a survey question. We're going to be piping from Fave Brew, the previous question. In this case, we want to take their selected choices. Notice how there's a selected choices and selected choices entered text. We'll want selected choices enter text because if someone did select the other option and typed something in, we'd like it to be the typed in option there. By pasting that all in, look, it automatically generated some Qualtrics syntax for us. This is the code that's going to pull that information from the previous location. In addition, we have to introduce a new type of response type in Qualtrics. We actually don't want to use a multiple choice question here. We want to use something called a matrix table. Why are we going to be using a matrix table? Well. We look again at what was requested of us is we have five different brand personality traits genuine daring responsible glamorous and rugged and each one of them are scored on a five point scale from not at all descriptive to extremely descriptive since they all have the exact same response scale it makes sense that we would present them in a matrix format here so our statements are the brand personality traits and again we could type them in one at a time here but it's much easier to edit multiple statements since we already we can simply paste in those terms. And in this case, notice how we have the phrase how well. So by default, Qualtrics thought we might want a matching scale to extremely well to not well at all. That's actually a pretty decent response scale for this particular question. Doesn't map up into exactly what we wanted to have here.
OK. Next, we'll notice that the instructions, we also had some coding rules where 1 was supposed to equal not at all descriptive and 5 was supposed to equal very descriptive. How do we make sure that we have our code set correctly? Well, that's where we look to the left-hand side here of this particular question under Advanced Question Options. Click. Sure enough, we can recode the values. So right now the default is that 1 is not all descriptive, 5 is very extremely descriptive. So we're in good shape. That's exactly what we wanted. In addition, we might want to adjust one more thing here. We might expect that if genuine is always the very first option being given to people, they may pay a little more attention to answering this question. And as they get bored, all the way down towards rugged, they pay a little less attention. So how do we fix this problem? We'd like people to give equal attention to all these options uh, as they take the survey. One way to fix this is we could do randomization. We could say randomize the order of all choices. So for any one person, any one of these might show up first. Now that we've done this advanced pipe text feature here, let's test to see if it works correctly. You can go always go to the very top, preview the entire survey. I'll take you all the way through. Or if you'd like to test just a particular section of the survey, you can always go to block options for that particular block and click view block. Hmm, seems to not be working very well. When I click ballast point here, I was hoping that the phrase ballast point would show up right down here. What's going on? The problem is for piping, for piping text to work, we need to have a page click in between these two questions. This information needs to be sent back to the Qualtrics server then rerouted back down into this particular question. That's easy enough to solve. Now we already learned that creating a new block automatically creates a page break, but there's also a way to create a page break within a block. Let's go here where Fave Brew is. Let's add a page break that's within the block. Now let's test it. Favorites Ballast Point. Thinking, ah, there we go. Works great. All right, we're in good shape. Next, we have to end, create one more question where we have people recall how much money they spent. I already created that question called it Spend Top. And again, we have to engage in the piping text feature, which is not a tr problem. We're used to it by now. In this particular case, we wanted people to actually type in how much money they spent. So we have to switch it from a multiple choice option to a text entry option. And then we'd like it so that they only type in numerical values. Content validation, the answer should be at least some sort of number. And at minimum, zero. Maybe we'd set some sort of max, which is showing up strangely here for some reason, but I think you can still see it. And we might say any answer greater than 9,999 is not acceptable. Okay, we have one more task of a questionnaire item that we need to develop for this block, and that is the beer names variable. In the beer names variable, we have to provide people a list of beers that are brewed by San Diego breweries. Here's a list with two other options so people can type in their two alternate choices if they wish as well as they have to be able to give a none of the above choice and then you'll be able to say uh, check any boxes of any of the beers they've had in the last 30 days so this is a, a multi-select no trouble we can again copy all of these as we've done previously we can make a new question paste these in just like we've done in the past we don't want these items here. Move the formatting. Again, we can edit multiple choices. Paste these all in. Clean up these annoying bullet points that ideally we wish people didn't have placed. We see what some more option here. We need to have a none of the above choice. People may not have had any of these beers in the last 30 days. We need to make this an exclusive answer. That's an option we have to set here in Qualtrics. So we've set all of our options here. We need to make sure that this is a multiple choice answer. So we see check boxes now. For other, we allow for text entry as we have done in the past. And for none of the above, well, if someone takes none of the above, 
we certainly don't want any other checkboxes to be available, so we can add a little convenient option for us. We can make uh, this answer exclusive. This won't, this little blue circle here won't be shown to the respondent, but what happens is if they check multiple different options and they check this, it'll eliminate all the other checks. So perfect. And we can just change our name here to beer names. And that wraps up this block. And now let's take a closer look at what this new next block is going to be. Okay, for this next block, we're going to call this the loop block, but let's take a closer peek at what this is really going to do here. We have a single survey question in this block called BeerVal. It's going to be a matrix style question. It's going to be a semantic differential with three different questionnaire items. Let's see, it says, looking at the words below, please select the position on the scale that indicates how strongly you believe the word applies to. And then we're going to loop across each one of the brands of beer that they had selected in the previous question here and then people will rate whether it's a good deal or not a good deal across a semantic differential scale, unique, not unique, also semantic differential and good and bad. So first we have to make a semantic differential question which is new but not difficult. But we have to do something else here called loop and merge. Essentially even though we're only going to create one question in Qualtrics, we want this question shown x times where x equals the number of different options that were selected in the previous question. And we can do that by setting up a loop and merge option in the block itself. So let's take a look at that. So we go ahead and just make a new block. You can call this block the loop block. You can name it anything you want that's calling it a loop block doesn't change anything. But here in the actual block option, we look for a setting here called the loop and merge. We have to turn on the loop and merge option. We want to loop across all the questions that we place in this block eventually based off a previous question. So we know it's the beer names question that we just developed earlier. And as with the previous times that we've used the selected choices option, just like in pipe text, we'll do selected choices, enter text in case somebody brings in information in the text open field text box. So now we hear it's populated our field with the previous options, only the ones that were checked will be shown. Here in field two, we're not going to make use of it in this tutorial, but you could type in additional information and refer to that field. So maybe you could also add in information here by hand of the types of beer that these are. So enjoy buys a double IPA, red trolleys and amber, and maybe you want to provide that information as part of a question. We can also randomize the loop order here. So if someone checks great white and sculpin, they may see it great white and sculpin, or they might see it as sculpin then great white. Okay, so we've set up the loop and merge, but now we actually need to create the question itself. So we'll set up the matrix style question here. It wants, we want to make a semantic differential, so we have to look for that option over here. In that case, it's a bipolar. Bipolar adjective is another phrase for semantic differential. Five scale points. And let's bring in the terms that we had from the previous Word document. And of course, we have to bring over the actual questionnaire item wording itself. And we just paste that in, same procedure that we're used to using at this point. Move the text. Uh, here, we actually want to bring in the word of the beer brand. So we need to use our pipe text feature as we have in the past. But we're going to do something, we're going to refer to a slightly different menu here. This time the pipe text information is actually coming from the loop and merge itself in the block. And sure enough, we can refer to that first field here where all the other names of the beers are being populated from the previous question. We catch a little editing error here. There we go. And name it. Okay, looking pretty good. We should probably give this a test run. Now, <clears throat> to be clear that we can't just test this block directly in their block options because we have to actually see if it's working with the loop from the previous question. So unfortunately, to test this, we're going to want to go all the way through, preview the entire survey, make sure we qualify. We already noticed one thing we had to clean up. Notice here, in this first option here, thinking about it's empty, 
there was no information populated from the previous because I didn't check through a particular uh, brewery. So we'll have to figure out a way to make sure that this question only shows up if something's actually selected. That won't be a problem. And let's say Sculpin and Grapefruit Sculpin are the two options that are selected, as well as none of the above. Oh, remember we set none of the above to make sure that the problem doesn't occur. Let's see what happens if we check none of the above though. Oh no, none of the above is actually a beer. We'll have to fix that as well. Okay, I'm gonna restart the survey really quick. Here we go. I typed in anything, any, anything shows up. Belching Beaver Peanut Butter Stout shows up. And Red Trolley shows up. Very good. So it appears to be working just fine. We do have to clean up a couple of those problems with the question showing when they shouldn't. So let's clean those up now. First, for this one, what's the logic? We can use a display logic question here. So add display logic. That means this question will only show up if a particular condition is true. So if our beer names question, if none of the above is not selected, then show this question. So that should work well. We had one other problem here earlier for this question where we grabbed information about the previous brewery and populated it here and we asked people to score their brand personality. If someone didn't check anything at all, this question still showed up and it was just empty here. So we learned something about how piping text works when it can't do anything, it still tries to pipe forward that information if other content's available to be shown. So how can we fix that? Well, first, we could just force people to answer this question, which of the following breweries do you consider the most preferred? We could actually force the response this way. Got to be careful about forced response though. People do not like being forced to answer questions they don't want to answer. So only use forced response if you absolutely need to. For example, we probably want to add a forced response to our screening question about someone's age, because that's necessary to make sure we're not measuring, pe uh, studying people who say they are under 21. An easier way to do this here would be simply not to have this question show up if nothing was entered. So, so our solution in this case would be a simple display logic that's going to take a little bit to build out. Again, we just refer to the favorite brew question that came previously. Basically, as long as at least one of these was selected, we want this next question to be show uh, to show up, which will be me because it'll be piped. So if stone is selected, can add another condition, which would be an or condition. And unfortunately, it's going to just take a little bit. Got to keep doing this. And, or, and after a bit of tedious but easy work, this looks pretty good. As long as at least one of those options is selected, we should indeed show the following question. In our next block, it looks like we want to upload a particular image, an image of several different beers, and then we want to let participants select those beers that they would like or not like to drink. So we're going to make a new block called heat with a variable called beer pick and we will upload a particular image and we will create a hotspot. The hotspot is easily available here. It's one of the advanced options. There's the heat map, which people can click, click any place on an image or hotspot where you pre-assign locations that people can click based on, and based on a set of instructions. That's what we want here. and it prompts us to select a graphic. Now in this case, you would have to go and upload a new graphic from your desktop. In my case, I already have this image uploaded and ready to use amongst all the other images that I've used for other studies. So I've uploaded my image. I set my hotspots. When you right click, you can clone the region to add additional regions. So 
we have our four regions set now. We can set a bunch of different options here for our hotspot map. The interactivity can either just be on or off, or it can be like or dislike. So there's really three states. Someone likes something, it's green. Dislike, it's red. Or clicked invisible, which is the default state, which is neutral. For validation, you can force people to click at least a certain number of options. In this case, they don't necessarily have to click anything. Let's preview this question. Let's see, I'd like to have this one, this one, and not this one. We just have one more block that we need to add to complete our Qualtrics questionnaire. It's the experiment block. The nice thing about Qualtrics is you can actually build online experiments with relative ease. In this case, it's going to be a simple A versus B versus C advertising test. Each person will be shown one of these three different images. And then they're all going to answer the same two questions, meaning the images are independent variables, the things we're manipulating, and our dependent variables are these two questions below. Probably the easiest way to do this is first put in our add evaluation question. So we have a question where they're going to be the same scale used twice. So again, we're going to use our handy dandy matrix table. And for our scale points, none all is not correct, but disagree, agree is correct. Strongly agree, do you strongly disagree? It looks good. Let's make sure our coding works correctly. Generally speaking, we think higher numbers are associated with more positive things. So let's see if strongly agree is correctly coded in our, in our system as seven on this seven point agreement scale. Ah, it is not. So we can manually change those here. It's actually a bit strange. They don't organize it that way by default. And clearly we have our dependent variables, but now we need to upload our images. So we can click here to upload our first image. We just need descriptive text. We'll call this add A. Click here to write the question text. We're not actually going to put any text here at all. We're just going to upload our images. So we can go to Rich Content Editor. Delete. There's nothing in here. And then we will upload an image, or I'm sorry, insert the graphic from the image uploader. In your case, you'd have to upload these graphics, but I already have them available to me. Do that again. And one more time. So now we have a simple experiment almost completely set up. We have our three stimuli representing our different levels of our independent variable, the actual advertisement. We have our dependent variable. But if someone took this block right now, they would see all three images. We only want them to see one, but we always want them to see these dependent variables on the bottom. That's easy enough to fix. We're just going to take advantage of a block level tool called question randomization. In our case, what we want to have happen is from those three images, we want Qualtrics to select one of them at random, but we always want to show the dependent variable at the bottom. So that requires us to set up advanced randomization. And this is a little frustrating here. Even though I'm clicking in these empty spaces, you have to trust me on this one. There are, this is advertisement A, this is advertisement B. For some reason, click to write the question text, the default settings here in advertisement C, and here's our dependent variable. 
there was no text there was just images so even though and therefore Qualtrics wasn't able to label this anything helpful to us but trust me when I say there really is something here so here's what we're gonna do we're going to shift select all three of these options and again even though it's empty trust me those three pictures are all here we're gonna migrate those over into the random subset area again there's all three are here again all three really are here but we're only going to randomly insert one of those options. And then if we just sort of click away, we'll see that from this subset that I just built, there's a new menu here, a, a new bracket here called random subset. So now there's only two options. This random subset, I'm going to sort it so that it's first. So from this subset of three images, Qualtrics will randomly select one of them, and then it'll always show the dependent variable to everybody. This should work nicely. Let's test our block. Sure enough, we see just one image, that's good. We see the same dependent variable at the bottom. Let's start over. Ah, a new image has shown up. Good, it looks like the randomizer is working okay. So this is nice, we've built an experiment. We can manipulate an independent variable, track a dependent variable. Obviously the details of running a good experiment are a little more complex than this, but it does illustrate how to do this in Qualtrics. Okay, at this point, it looks like we've wrapped up building out our Qualtrics survey per the requirements stated in the Word document. However, I would like to point out a few things. This isn't really an ideally designed survey. There's numerous things that we would have done differently if this was for a real client in the real world. We probably would have added transition statements. We'd have thought a little more carefully about the way we worded some of our questions and making sure they mapped correctly onto our research questions and so on. But I do think this illustrates a lot of the key functionality in Qualtrics that marketers like to exploit to, take, to answer their research questions in a superior way using online surveys. We're not quite done programming our Qualtrics survey though. We do have to make sure that our survey experience is a little different for each person that participates in this questionnaire. First of all, if someone is under 21, we want them to go to the end of the survey, kick them out. But this time, we want to actually take them to a page that thanks them first. So earlier when we set up the taking someone to the end of the survey in the screening criteria, it just kicked them right out. We'd like to thank them before we kick them out. If someone says they're 21 to 33 per our screening question, they should go through the entire survey as normal. And if someone is over 33, we don't actually need them to answer all the different questions in our survey. We only need them to answer our experiment and heat map, I mean hotspot questions. So we're going to take advantage of a survey flow tool to do this. First, before we get going, we need to turn off our screening question skip logic here. We need to make one new block called thank you 21. And just a simple thank you for those people who are under 21. Here we type something like thank you for your interest in our survey. Unfortunately, you do not qualify for our survey at this time. There we go, that's a little nicer. So we're gonna take advantage of this block at the very end uh, for those people who are under 21. So now we have a series of different blocks. If I collapse them, we might remember the introduction block, the fave block, the loop block, heat block, the experiment block, and we have this thank you, oops, thank you block. If we go to survey flow, we can easily rearrange these. Survey flow. We see it's kind of organized at the block level here. And if someone enters our survey, this is the default path that they travel. But we, because it's called the flow, we can actually add some criteria that moves people around. So in this case, we can add below the introduction and add a branch. This will split certain types of people based on some criteria into having a different survey experience than the default experience. So let's add our first basic condition for our screener. If someone said they're under 21 and it's selected, they will now travel down this block. So we should send them to a particular block. 
This would be the thank you 21 block. And then after they take that, if we don't do anything else, it'll skip them automatically back into the main questionnaire. We don't want to do that. We do in fact want to terminate people that travel down this particular branch. Now let's do this one more time. You add it below again, add a new branch just below the introduction, add a new condition, again for the screener. This time if someone says they're over 33, we want to send them immediately to our heat block. Then we can send them from the heat block. After they complete that, they can take our experiment. And then we're done with them. So we can end the survey. OK, so let's see. We set up if someone's 33 or over, if someone's under 21. So if they meet the other criteria, the middle age, they'll skip over both of these entirely. They won't meet these branching conditions. They'll go right from introduction to the favorite block, then to loop block, heat, experiment. And the thank you, oh, we don't need that. We can simply delete that here. And even though this is the very end, by default it'll end, I find it personally satisfying to just add in end of survey here. There we go. So now for the same questionnaire, we have three different survey experiences. Okay, I hope you enjoyed your introduction to Qualtrics. By no means that I touch on all of the features that Qualtrics offers. Luckily, the Qualtrics website offers numerous tutorials that show you how to easily take advantage of some of the other advanced functionality. Best way to learn how to use Qualtrics is to play around, check out some of the other menus, options, and question types that we didn't explore here and see how they might serve your purposes. Happy Qualtrics-ing!